Now, if you haven't seen my last video on the subject, what are you doing? Click on the top right. Click on the little icon -y thing that's popping up like right now. You can watch it there. Or you can click on the description below or wait till the end of the video. Either works. I decided there was way too much bad will towards the show, to the point of it being pretty ridiculous and unwarranted, I believe. So in an effort to counteract some of that bad will, I'm doing a series of reviews on every season of All Grown Up, starting with season one, of course. Now, season one of the show was a part that I always disregarded, as it never really fit exactly with the rest of the show, both in style, presentation, comedy, and stories. It's extremely different in comparison to season two through to five, which I think is interesting because in a lot of ways, this season shares a lot of similarities with, of course, Rugrats, in its tone and especially in its animation style. The stories and comedy is of course different, but in a lot of ways, it felt like an actual continuation on and not its own show. So I very rarely actually watched it because in a lot of ways, it felt like this hybrid really. But now after watching it for the first time in quite a while, because I never really re-watched this season, but I gotta say it's pretty damn good. It has some meh episodes, but let's get into it. Now once again, this video is a continuation of the points and ideas I have already expressed in a different video, so if you haven't watched that, link in the description, little icony thing in one of the corners, and also link to the end of the video. Check it out. Alright, so I'm just going to talk about some of the episodes that I have strong opinions on. I'm also not going to be talking about All Growed Up, the pilot episode, because I feel like that requires its very own episode. Coupe de Ville. I think it's, this is a really interesting episode, as especially this is more or less the first episode of the show. So it's an interesting one to choose, really, as it's built around Phil and Lil, so two side characters in a way. Of course, they're part of the main cast, but they often get slanted to the side. This episode has some great moments, some amazing lines, and of course, a good amount of heart, which is all, which, that's the trademark of Rugrats. But this episode did something that really surprised me and I wasn't expecting it to do, especially for the first episode. So the whole episode is built around Lil wanting to be her own person and not be just Phil and Lil to be her own person. And so it's about her and Phil having a bit of a falling out, her no longer sharing a room with him, so on and so forth. Things are of course resolved at the end and then on better terms than at the beginning of the episode. But she never moves back in. She is a changed character by the end of one episode. Not a whole lot of focus is drawn to that, but we live in a world of cartoons where nothing can ever change or progress. SpongeBob will never get his driver's license. Squidward will never be happy. I said in my last video that this show is basically like a sitcom, but it actually avoids one of the biggest issues that sitcoms and cartoons have. That big issue is that no one can ever change or grow or improve because the show is written by a bunch of different people and they can't just manage all these different plot lines and all this type of stuff. And like if one person changes a character here, there's no way they can all the writers know about that. And because they're all working at the same time, it makes sense. When a show is mass produced, you can't have that growth and you can't have improvement and all that type of stuff, at least not in a meaningful way over a short amount of time. I absolutely hate this. It makes the viewing experience feel so passive. I could literally fall asleep during so many cartoons or TV shows or anything like that, wake up after that episode, watch the next episode, and nothing's changed. Nothing's improved, nothing has altered. Everyone is exactly the same. And it's just like, why am I even watching this if nothing actually happens? No one actually evolves or anything like that. What is the actual point of this? It's completely passive. It literally feels like a waste of time. It's because it's not actually a story. It's just cheap entertainment. In the very first episode of All Grown Up, they go against that. They break the status quo before it's barely even established. What they are saying to us with this very first episode is this isn't a passive show. This is a show of growth and evolution. These are stories that if we care about these characters, these are stories that matter. All while being an extremely funny show. Most shows get past the whole annoying thing of just being status quo all the time because they're very funny. This show does both. I'll have to talk in this episode. Truth or consequences. 
Now, I feel like this is probably the episode that made a lot of people dislike the way characters changed from Rugrats to All Grown Up. But once again, I disagree. I think this is a wonderful example of All Grown Up being everything it should be. A show that gives these characters we care about and love a problem. A problem that challenges the characteristics we know about. Gives them a problem that could break them and their friendships, but through the episode they overcome but are changed by it. And their relationships are changed by it. A show that evolves. The story revolves around Tommy trying to create a film to put into a film competition. Once his alien sci-fi drama thing falls apart, he decides to instead create a documentary of his friends and family's more unsavory aspects. This causes a divide in the group because Tommy believes he is just creating art and capturing the truth and fulfilling his purpose as a artist, whereas his friends see him as taking advantage of them, basically. Culminating in the question of what's more important, truth or what is easiest? Which then culminates in the answer that not everything we see is the immediate truth. This episode, besides being one of the funniest, does something pretty unprecedented, for Rugrats at least. And I definitely believe is the cause for why so many people and even the voice actress of Tommy just didn't like the direction of the show. And I believe that is because this episode and quite a few other episodes puts Tommy in a negative position where he keeps on making mistakes while believing he is in the right. My point is, what's wrong with that? I think this is a fantastic episode that shows even the best characters have flaws. Tommy gets so obsessed with the idea of being an artist that he loses sight of what his friends want, and his friends get so obsessed with infighting they can't support him in making his original film. Conflict like this is good. It what's, it's what makes a story. Saying, oh, they're just best friends for their entire lives. They would never be in a situ like, situation like this because they all grew up together. That's all the more reason for why conflict within the group is so important. We have to see them all have an actual relationship. Them all just being like, oh, best friends forever is not a show. They constantly had conflict in Rugrats. Not to the same degree, but it, it's how the show worked. It's how shows work. And just because there is a level of conflict doesn't mean the direction the characters are taken is bad. It's really sad to me that so many people just saw this or an episode like this and just dismissed the rest of the show because, oh, it's not character accurate. When it is such a good choice to have episodes like this because it's actually like actually progresses these characters from more than when they were babies. It's fantastic. River Rats. Oh my lord, this episode encompasses everything all grown up can do that the original show couldn't do and does everything I want all grown up to do. It actually, again, challenges these characters, their relationships and how they want each other to perceive them. It's all built around Tommy being afraid of getting his head under the water and trying to hide that from Chucky because he doesn't want Chucky's image of him to be tarnished. Damn, this show is good sometimes. Now, not everything in this season is top notch. Bad Kimmy had good elements, but is mostly meh. Twin Age Tycoons is a good episode, but Dill works best as a supporting character, and this episode puts too much stock in the whole brother loyalty thing, and I always get a little tired of that. Same with Brother Can You Spare the Time. The problem with this episode is they need to push Tommy and Dill's characters to points of extreme to get them to have a falling out like this. Their day-to-day -day characters in this show wouldn't have had that falling out, so they had to tweak the intensity and it feels off. It also doesn't fit Dill's character of the show to overreact like this. Well, there you have it. There are some definitely sensational episodes in this season. One or two bad ones and a few good ones as well. I reckon episodes like Brother Can You Spare the Time bring down episodes like River Rats and episodes like Cupid Stupid don't really sway it too much. So I'd give this season a B minus. I'd put it like under season four of SpongeBob uh, and like under season one of Jimmy Neutron. It's a good season, but they haven't worked out the show's identity yet. It's dancing on the line of being Rugrats or being its own show, which is definitely something we'll get into with the later seasons. Anyway, that's everything. Bye bye <laughs>